Hello everybody. You can see that water is everywhere. It's in each and every cell of ours. 80% of the cytoplasm is water. 80% of our blood, the plasma part of the blood, is water. Well, even our whole body, 70% is water. And water is not only inside us. Water is around us, where you see 70% of our blue planet is water. So you can see very clearly, water is very important. In today's edition of BioWorld, I'm going to show you the importance of water based on its physiological roles in all living things. But first, let's understand what is the meaning of physiological roles. Physiological roles refer to how biomolecules, that means molecules that are involved with biology, carry out functions in a living system. The living system can be part of a plant, part of an animal, and of course, part of a human being. What are the examples of these functions? Functions can be broadly categorized as uh, water's role as a solvent, water's role in transport, support, lubrication, as well as temperature regulation. So what I'm going to do now is explain briefly about each one of these physiological roles and relate it to the physical and chemical properties which I introduced to you in the water part one and part two videos. So come, follow me. First is the role of water as a solvent of life. Water can dissolve everything except lipid soluble molecules. Water can dissolve gases, ionic substances like salt, polar substances like glucose. So that is why water is also called a universal solvent. Now the properties that enable water to function as a solvent of life is of course the property of solvent. This is a chemical property but as I've explained to you in my water part 1 video, water can be a solvent because it can do hydrogen bonding. It can do hydrogen bonding because it is polar and it is polar because it has bond angles. So there are three chemical properties and one physical property that enables water to be a solvent of life. Now once water dissolves all these molecules in a living system, the second physiological role is important. That role is the role of transport. You see, the picture behind you shows you the human and animal circulatory system involving the transport of blood, where I mentioned to you earlier, 80% of blood is water. Now, it's not only animals and humans that need water for transport. Even plants need water for transport, where the xylem and the phloems will help to transport nutrients, minerals and water. Now, in transport, one golden rule is that water must move as an unbroken column. So, to make sure water is continuous, which property do you think is important? I hope you said cohesiveness. Cohesiveness is a physical property and once again, if you understand the discussion we had in video part 1 and part 2, cohesiveness comes from hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding comes from polarity. Polarity comes from bond angle. And of course, if water is going to transport molecules, water must have used the chemical property of solvent to dissolve the molecules. So this is how all the properties work together to carry out a specific physiological role. Let's look at the 
third physiological role. The next property is water's role in support. Now, this function of water is not necessary in animals that have endoskeleton, such as humans. But it is very important for organisms that have no bones, for example, plants. Plants can remain upright with the help of turgor pressure. Turgor pressure forms when water pushes onto the cell wall of plant cells. Besides plants, some animals also require water for support. Animals that have no endoskeleton or exoskeleton use water as hydrostatic skeleton to give them structure. Next, we move on to aquatic organisms. Now, this picture shows you mosquito larva. Of course, mosquitoes are not aquatic, but the larva depend on water. You've always heard about the fact that stagnant water is where mosquitoes like to lay their eggs. The reason is because when the eggs hatch, the larva can hang at the interface of the water. Why they hang here is so that they can get oxygen from the atmosphere while they still stay in the water. The other animal that I have already introduced to you in video part 1 is the water strider. Please remember it is strider, not spider. Not SP, yeah, it's ST. Okay, the water strider you can see can walk on the surface of water where water now is supporting the weight of the water strider. So, all these are made possible by specific properties of water. We look at the property that is related to the water strider. That property is surface tension. So, once again, if you see your understanding of our discussion on properties, we can reflect back that Surface tension occurs because of cohesiveness. Cohesiveness occurs because of hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding happens because of polarity. Polarity happens because of bond angle. So you see, once you understand the relationship between each property, explaining the function of the properties for each physiological role becomes much easier. Okay, let's go on to the next physiological role. The next role is about temperature regulation. You see, even if you have an active lifestyle or if we are standing under our hot Malaysian sun, our body temperature can always be maintained at 37 degrees Celsius. Our body is 70% water. And you see, even when you stand under the sun, the heat from the sun is not going to boil your body to make the temperature go up higher. Same thing happens to planet Earth. Since planet Earth is 70% water, Although the sun is directly hitting the oceans of Earth, Earth is still able to maintain an average temperature of 16 degrees Celsius. Of course, in Malaysia, the story is a little bit different. Our temperature for the month of July 2021 has been an average of 31 degrees Celsius. Of course, this is hot, but you see, the temperature is not going to fluctuate. Fluctuate means it is not going to increase higher or extremely high from this value or decrease extremely low from this value. Meaning that you don't have to worry that one day you are going to wake up with a body temperature of 16 degrees. Or you are going to wake up another day with a body temperature of 50 degrees. As long as you are a healthy person, you know your body temperature will be in the range of 37. Okay? So likewise, don't hope Malaysia to suddenly have a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. Right? But also be grateful, Malaysia will never have the temperature of a desert at say 40, 
45 degrees Celsius. Right? So, the very fact that we have so much water in our body and around us ensures that temperature is constant and fluctuations are minimized. Now, all this is possible because of the physical property of water that is water having high specific heat capacity. So, although the sun is shining uh, over us or over the ocean, but you see for our body temperature or the environment's temperature to go up by 1 degree Celsius, a lot of heat has to be absorbed and that is not easy. Likewise, for our body temperature or the environment temperature to go down by many degrees is also very difficult because it is not easy to lose heat to reduce by 1 degree Celsius. So that is also the reason why if a person is having fever and their temperature say goes up to say 39 degrees Celsius, we consider that as extremely high Although mathematically you see like it's only 2 degrees Celsius, but biologically we know to increase by 2 degrees Celsius, a lot of heat has been absorbed. Okay, so now back to the properties. Why water has high specific heat capacity is because it has many hydrogen bonds. And once again, why it has many hydrogen bonds? Because it is a bipolar molecule. And why is it a bipolar molecule? Because it is a nonlinear molecule with a bond angle. So this is how we can relate this physical property of specific heat capacity to its the physiological role in temperature regulation. We see another property involved in temperature regulation. After we exercise or stand under the hot sun, we naturally will sweat. But sweating is beneficial to us in two ways. One, it helps us excrete waste, but related to this topic, it helps us cool down. Our body temperature can return to normal much quicker when we let the sweat evaporate. Sweat evaporates by absorbing heat from our body. So as the sweat disappears from our skin, heat from our body also escapes. So this is related to the physical property of High latent heat of vaporization because we know water needs to absorb a lot of heat to break the hydrogen bonds so that water in liquid form can be converted into vapor. So once again the same set of properties appear that is the bond angle, the polarity and hydrogen bonding and of course high latent heat of vaporization for cooling effect. Now, there is one more discussion about temperature regulation. Now, all this while, I've been talking about temperature regulation when it is hot. Let's now discuss temperature regulation when it is cold. During winter, snow will accumulate and deposit on the surface of the pond until the pond eventually forms a layer of ice. So now, will the poor fish freeze and die? Luckily for us, water's property, where water in the form of ice at 0 degrees Celsius floats because its density is less. And water at 4 degrees Celsius will sink because its density is more. So this way you see, the layer of ice here will actually insulate the aquatic organisms from the cold outside. What this means is, although outside is freezing at negative 20 degrees Celsius, 
water will still be stable at 4 degrees Celsius because the layer of ice will be protecting them. So, the property we are talking about is density caused by hydrogen bonding of ice, which involves four hydrogen bonds that makes it a lattice pattern. I've explained this in my water video part two. Okay, now the hydrogen bonding, of course, happens because of polarity. Polarity happens because of bond angles. So for temperature regulation, we have three different physical properties explaining three different situations. Let us now move on to the next physiological role. The final physiological role that I will discuss is water's role in lubrication. You can find water at the synovial fluid located at joints of our bones. You can also find the presence of water in the mucus that lines our digestive system. The presence of water in both these locations are actually to help reduce friction so that we can move without pain and the food that we consume can travel easily along our system. So the smoothness of movement is enabled by water's property of cohesiveness. And once again, you know, with cohesion, cohesion comes hydrogen bonding, polarity and bond angle. So I have concluded the discussion on all the properties of water and their physiological role. Most importantly, I hope you realize how important water is for our health. So go have a drink of water and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.